Have I just made a cheesy YouTube video telling you that you can make your own iPhone device for cheaper? Well, no. You see, knowing the cost of manufacturing iPhones will help you to understand not just the current iPhone prices, but also other key decisions being made like their subscription plans and new Apple devices. Let's find out how. Cost Overview iPhone boasts a 22% global smartphone market share. When you look at revenues and profits from smartphones, including other companies like Samsung and Xiaomi, Apple collects over 40% of all global smartphone revenue and 75% of the industry's profits, making iPhone the world's most profitable phone. And such large profits are only possible through a sizable markup on its phones. For example, according to Tech Insight's teardown analysis, a brand new 256GB storage iPhone 13 Pro costs costs around $570 to build, while the retail price is a lot higher than this at $1,099. That's almost double. But to be honest, this figure is somewhat misleading. The cost of materials is only one part of what goes into the final retail price of an iPhone. Other costs include research and development, marketing, shipping, and business overheads such as salaries and administrative expenses. When you add up all of those costs, the total cost would be a lot higher than the amount mentioned earlier. So let's dive a little deeper and focus on the the breakdown of the bill of materials first, and then I will give you a sense of how the other costs factor into the overall cost of an iPhone and Apple's overall profit margins. Breakdown of Manufacturing Costs Apple uses a wide range of materials and hardware to build its products. The iPhone alone is made of metal, glass, and many other components, such as the battery, sensors, modems, and circuit boards. So let's break down the cost of each such element and estimate the manufacturing cost of the latest iPhone 13 Pro. Let's begin by looking at the critical component that makes an iPhone work, its processor, or what's commonly known as the brain of the phone. Apple relies on chipmaker TSMC to produce the A-series chips that power its iPhones. The latest iPhone models use the A15 Bionic chip, built using TSMC's second-generation 5 nanometers fabrication process. The A15 Bionic chip contains 15 billion transistors and is one of the most complex chips ever created. It's also one of the single most expensive components of the phone. It's tough to gauge the actual manufacturing price of such a chip, since many fixed costs are involved, like R&D, testing, and materials. But most estimates suggest that the new iPhone A15 Bionic chip costs upwards of $120. Adding other components to the chipset like storage of 256 gigabytes, a memory of 1 terabyte, a modem for communications, and other circuitry of the SOC, or system on a chip. The total cost of the iPhone 13 Pro processor is around $200. In addition to the processor, other vital components that make up an iPhone are its display, camera system, battery, sensors, and housing unit. These components make up the next big chunk of the iPhone's manufacturing costs. So let me put a number to these components and see where our total stands after that. China's BOE Technology Group manufactures the iPhone 13 Pro's newest Super Retina XDR OLED display. Apple is looking to shift from BOE and considering the purchase of LG displays, which will make manufacturing costs of these displays even cheaper in the future iPhones. But for now, I'm looking at a unit price of around $75 for each display panel. Next are the cameras. The iPhone 13 Pro's triple unit camera system is one of the best smartphone cameras out out there in the market today. While other smartphone manufacturers have experimented with larger megapixel counts for their camera systems, Apple has maintained its 12 megapixel camera core and focused on the lens and software side. Currently, all iPhone camera sensors are sourced from Sony. However, Apple is looking to develop its in-house camera manufacturing capabilities in the future. Based on expert reports, I'll peg the new phone's four cameras, front and back, at $95. Next is the battery, which is a highly efficient 3095 milliamp unit. Apple claims to have reduced the overall cost of its batteries. However, most experts agree that the battery cost has remained the same in the last few models. So, going by that, the battery cost for the new iPhone 13 Pro should not exceed $15 per unit. And finally, we have the various sensors, housing units, and other miscellaneous hardware items. Again, it is hard to put a number to this. Still, after researching multiple documents and looking at the breakdowns of older iPhone models, I can safely assume that the total cost of this segment should be around $60. So that brings the overall cost of all the materials that go into manufacturing the new iPhone 13 Pro to $445. Assembled in low labor cost China 
But that's not the end of the story. Once Apple has all of the materials, it needs to assemble them into a final product. This is where another significant chunk of the cost of an iPhone comes from. Manufacturing an iPhone is a highly complex and expensive process. It involves hundreds of individual steps and dozens of manufacturing facilities, mainly in China. To start, Apple uses a process called surface mount technology to attach all of the tiny components onto the circuit boards. This process is typically done by automated machines, although some manual labor is still involved. Apple prefers to undertake all its assembly operations in China, not because it is a source of cheap labor as many of us believe. According to Tim Cook, China stopped being the source of cheap labor years ago when they started moving up in the value chain. It is now a place where a large number of excellent tooling engineers reside and they are vital to the iPhone's delicate assembly operations. After the surface mounting process is complete, the circuit boards are then sent to another facility to be tested and assembled into the final product. This process includes attaching things like the camera, the display, and battery. Finally, the iPhone undergoes a series of quality control tests before it's packaged up and shipped off to Apple stores and retailers worldwide. After reviewing the labor costs involved in the assembly process and the financial sheets of the two companies that undertake this process for Apple, Foxconn and Pegatron, I have estimated that it costs Apple around $100 to assemble a single iPhone. This puts my final cost of manufacturing the new iPhone 13 Pro at $545. Let's round that off to $550. You can be confident of this estimate since this is only $20 off from the estimates put out by Tech Insights. They obviously used a more scientific method. So why is Apple charging you $1,099 for the phone? Where does the other $550 go? Is it all profits for Apple or are there additional costs involved? Total costs of an iPhone. Of course, it's important to remember that the manufacturing cost is just a part of what it takes to bring an iPhone to the market. $550 is just the raw cost of making the phone. Other costs are involved, such as research and development, marketing, business overheads like logistics and shipping, salaries, and administrative expenses. The list goes on. Apple is one of the largest companies globally. It takes a lot of different expenses to keep the business going. So when estimating the costs beyond the simple manufacturing costs, I focused on three major components. R&D expenses, sales-related fees, and marketing expenses. According to its recent financial reports, for the 12 months ending March 31st, 2022, Apple's research and development expenses were $24 billion. That's about 14% of its total profits for the same year. If I were to simply add that 14% extra cost to my manufacturing cost of $550, it would now be around $630. According to the same reports, another 14% of its gross profit was spent on sales and general general administrative expenses. This increases the overall cost yet again to $705. Finally, let's assume that Apple spends about $50 per iPhone on its marketing expenses. When you add all of these three costs up, a good case can be made that the total cost of an iPhone 13 Pro can be in the ballpark of $750 to $800 per unit. So there you have it. That's how much it actually costs to make an iPhone. So it's safe to say that Apple is making a healthy profit on each iPhone sale. After all, they are one of the most profitable companies globally. And with new innovations and improvements coming out every year, it doesn't look like they'll be slowing down anytime soon. What happens when innovation peaks? But even if innovation does peak, Apple may have already sorted it all out. At the end of April 2022, MKBHD asked the question in his YouTube video, what happens when the iPhone peaks? That is, what happens when people have no need to buy newer iPhones year in and year out because the features of older models are so similar? And the answer is, it's already happened. In the closing of 2018, Apple lost a good chunk of its net worth due to people buying fewer and fewer iPhones. This trend has seen Apple innovate around the iPhone, in the sense of innovating subscription services for users of the device. My previous video on Apple's subscription model for newer iPhones also highlights this new trend. Recently, Tim Cook's appearance at the Oscars, albeit overshadowed by the slap that was heard around the globe, didn't go unnoticed as he showed support for Apple TV originals that were nominated. Other innovations include AirPods, Apple Watch, and more. And my previous video on Apple's upcoming innovations for the century shed more light on this too. One of those new innovations, Apple Glasses, are expected to be released with the iPhone 14 lineup later in 2022, as the iPhone 14 devices are rumored to have Wi-Fi 6E connectivity standard, great for connecting with the mixed reality glasses. This new model of innovating around the device is great, since it means that Apple doesn't have to build as many devices every year, hence less waste. And it still doesn't stop profits coming in elsewhere from other subscriptions and newer devices. So the next time you're tempted by an expensive new iPhone, just remember that Apple has likely already made back its investment many times over. And suppose you can't afford the latest model. 
In that case, there's always the option of buying a used phone at a fraction of the original price. If you'd like to learn more about other tech topics like this one, be sure to click on any one of the cards in this video. Thanks for watching.